Good evening, black people and all allies fighting for black liberation, black prosperity, and black joy. I'm Charles Blow, and welcome to Prime. There's troubling new information emerging tonight confirming or reconfirming that racist and violent extremists are in our military, in our government, and in our universities. Some even apparently hold national security clearance. According to membership data leaked to The Guardian, a neo-Confederate group called the Sons of Confederate Veterans has members that include military officers, elected officials, public employees, and a national security expert whose resume brags of a Department of Defense security clearance. Sons of Confederate Veterans is a fraternity of supposedly direct descendants of Confederate soldiers that the Southern Poverty Law Center describes as dominated by racist extremists. They've recently been making news for their aggressive campaigns to block the removal of Confederate monuments. Just last week, the Georgia division of the group sued to overturn a judge's order to remove a Confederate statue in predominantly black Decatur, Georgia, and replace it with the late congressman and civil rights activist John Lewis. They're also the ones who flew a Confederate flag over a NASCAR race last year to protest NASCAR's decision to ban, to ban the Confederate flag. But while some members may just be fighting to preserve a statue of Confederate leaders, others are committing acts of violence by joining other racist and violent groups like the League of the South at events like the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville in 2017, where hundreds of white supremacists protested the city's plan to get rid of their Robert E. Lee statue. And you may recall that 32-year-old activist Heather Heyer was murdered by white supremacist James Field that day when he drove his car into a crowd of protesters. According to The Guardian, the names, addresses, phone numbers, and email addresses of almost 59,000 past and present members of the organization have been leaked, including 91 who use emails associated with government agencies and 74 who use addresses connected to various branches of the armed forces. Some of the people named in the Guardian report are Scott Wyatt, who's a Republican delegate representing Virginia's 97th district, Dwayne Prost, who was elected coroner of Osage County, Missouri in 2020 after reaching the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in the U.S. Army National Guard, and Danny Davis, who is a professor and program director at Texas A&M University. He's also a training consultant to the U.S. Army Reserve with a security clearance. Joining me now to discuss is Chief, Chief of Staff of the Southern Poverty Law Center, Leisha Brooks, and founder of the One People's Project, Daryl Lamont Jenkins. Ms. Brooks, can you please explain to us whether or not this group is a hate group and what makes them a hate group? Thank you, Charles, for having us on. Uh, first, the Southern Poverty Law Center considers the Sons of the Confederate Veterans as a neo-Confederate group or as a heritage group. They don't qualify for our categorization as a hate group. That does not mean they're not hateful. That does not mean they, they don't hold or have um, white supremacist beliefs and ideology, but the group itself does not have beliefs or practices that attack or malign an entire group of people based on their immutable characteristics. That's our definition of a hate group. As you said in your open, though, they have been involved in or engaged in, in some way, um, these, these tragic events that have taken place in the United States, including the Unite the Right rally that happened in 2017. Um, we saw them on January 6th as well. It's interesting that these neo-Confederate groups who say, you know, that they're just about heritage, that they show up time and time again at, at hate-filled events. Yeah, uh, Mr. Lamar, I want you to get, just kind of piggyback on that. Like, how do we separate this concept of being about heritage, right, 
from, you know, kind of a white world view or a white American view of, a, of the history of this country and what the culture should be and what the power structure should be of this country? Well, I don't, I don't know if necessarily we can. I mean, there are times whenever we do see folks who are about the heritage of the South and heritage that even goes back to the antebellum South. But when you do that, now we do have to address what that means. And that lends groups like the Sons of Confederate Veterans to fall in line with groups like League of the South. And when you think about what the Southern Poverty Law Center has, has written about Michael Hill, the founder of the League of the South, where he says that um, basically that the South has a black problem, for example, you realize that we are dealing with a problem that's pretty much one and the same when we're dealing with both the Sons of Confederate Veterans and the League of the South. And we always have. Ms. Brooks, I want to just ask you, were you surprised at all by the number of people who were, the number of uh, uh, names and addresses who were leaked, which is 59,000? Were you surprised yeah, at all yeah. that, that military members showed up in it, that a public official showed up in it, that people at university showed up in it? Did anything about this surprise you? I wish that I could say that it did surprise me, but it did not. The Southern Poverty Law Center, as you know, has been tracking this kind of activity for years. Um, the the, the pro-heritage groups, the, the fringe, you know, um, adjacent white supremacist groups grew from 26 in 2019 to 31 in 2020. And as, as the report said, that's about 60,000 people. And we've seen just an increase in extremism and extremist activity um, associated with these heritage groups. And let's just be clear, with the GOP. And even though we have a new president, they have not at all um, um, removed their extremist undercurrents from the party. We, we have seen uh, people running for public office who are connected to the Proud Boys, people who are connected to, you know, all kinds of um, hate and extremist groups that, again, were that participated in the Unite the Right rally and also participated in the January 6th insurrection. For example, Representative Kozar is, is supposedly, allegedly teaming up with a white nationalist and Holocaust de um, denier Nick Puentes to hold a fundraising event um, this weekend. It happens all the time. The Southern Poverty Law Center first brought to the to to the attention of the Secretary of Defense this connection or this 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 issue or problem or very real problem of white supremacists in the military. We started talking about that back in 1980. Um, our most recent testimony um, to the to the to the committee on on military. Uh, about the problem of white supremacy was just last year and earlier this year, rather. So, I mean, we continue to raise the alarm. Um, we're 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 encouraged by Secretary Austin's uh, seems to be taking this seriously as he witnessed white supremacy in the military um, over the course of his own career. So this is this is not new. No, I'm not surprised. And and unless and until we we push back on this and push back hard. It will continue to grow. Mr. Lamar, I just want to get your, your take on where you think all of this is leading us as a country. Where is this rise in extremism coming from and where is it going to take us? Well, we're always going to be evolving as a society. We are always going to continue to be building from what we had um, started from. But what it does mean is that a lot of people are going to get hurt until, unless I should say, we do something about these elements. We are talking about um, the whole thing regarding critical race theory. They're not really attacking critical race theory. This is an, an example. They're talking about trying to keep us from talking about our history and talking about how to combat racism. I mean, Senator Tom Cotton and Dan Crenshaw have this plan to allow, um, uh, make it easier for uh, military members to 
basically whistleblow whenever they hear about some form of critical race theory that's taking place within the military. And if we remember correctly, um, Senator Cotton of Arkansas was um, getting into it with um, the Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin over, um, over the fact that the Defense Secretary wants to address extremism within its ranks. And Tom Cotton was not too fond of that. So when you apply that, what the exchange that he had with um, the defense secretary with what he wants to do in regards to allowing service members to whistleblow against that kind of thing. We have to combat that. Otherwise, it can build and can get worse. But um, but it all depends on us. This is where the ball is in our court. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I say Ms. something Ms. to I that, too? Because about, like, I... How do we fight back? How do, how do you combat some of this? You know, the, the leader of the North Carolina Sons of Confederate Veterans is, is Kevin Stone. He's also a parole officer uh, for the mm -hmm. North Carolina Department of Public Safety. I mean, how do you, when, when these people are in the system, deeply embedded, woven into the system, how do you fight that from a, you know, a, a, a personal perspective of, uh, you know, your, your own personal liberty? And how do we fight that as a country and as a society? Well, the Southern Poverty Law Center will continue to call out. That's a, that's a part of our strategy, which I think has been extremely effective. When we I, when we know that elected officials or public officials are connected to um, uh, one of these hater extremist groups or a, a, a heritage group, what have you, we want to be the ones that 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 raise the alarm. And so, as individuals, I, I would I would say that we are fighting back now, and that is why we are experiencing this backlash. It's not. It's not. It didn't come from nowhere. That 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 now um, there's this yeah. entire pushback to to a false history, a false narrative. As we challenge the lost cause and the lost cause mythology, and demand that that symbols and um, monuments and memorials to white supremacy and 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 those who who fought to continue to enslave African Americans as we continue to push back on that and say that we are not going to have that and that we are going to teach the truth we will we will continue to to experience this backlash but it is up to us and it's in you know we we've shown the the resilience um, to be able to do that to continue to to speak truth to power and um, just keep keep challenging what is keep working to dismantle and disrupt these sim sy symptoms symptoms uh, systems of white supremacy and uh, continue to have the conversation call folks out yeah mr. Lauren I have about a one minute left I just want to ask you this last question it does feel to me like you know the uh, as that last summer people some people did experience some sort of awakening or something and they really did want to you know make themselves better and, and more educated but you know, corresponding to that swing in, in a positive direction, it felt like this rose in direct proportion to the number of people who wanted to be enlightened, that there were more people going further and further into the darkness, into the cave. How do we stop this country from bifurcating in that way? We have to be mindful of what it is they're doing. I mean, they are scared right now. They are very afraid of what we are doing because it real because they're realizing that the grip that they have held on black people is loosening and they are losing everything that they ever hope to have over us in um years and generations going forward i mean i i deal with a conference that happens every single year down in tennessee called the american renaissance conference it's happening in november and basically all they do is talk about how to do that. I mean, one of the speakers for, that's going to be um, speaking this year, Nathan, I mean, I'm sorry, um, Vincent James Fox, he was at January 6th. He was with the Groyper movement that um, that's run by Nick Fuentes, who was just mentioned earlier. And two weeks before, uh, back in 2017, that same conference was held two weeks before Charlottesville. Its organizers were there at that conference. So they are always going to be working to try to cut us down, try to keep us from advancing the way we are. And we just got to push back. We just got to simply be aware of who is running things, who is keeping um, them in power and remove them. Bottom line, remove them. Yes. Le Alicia Brooks, thank you very much.
Daryl Lamont Jenkins. I've been calling by your middle name all night. That's I'm fine. sure you love That's your fine. middle name, but I'm sure you would have preferred me to call you by your last name. So forgive me for that. And thank you very much, sir, Mr. Jenkins, for being here. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.